Um, lean technology is all about uh, identifying value, uh, so I thought I'd try and identify the value uh, in my presentation. My hope is that by the end of the, uh, the presentation, uh, you will understand uh, some of the background to the work that Praxis has been doing uh, on lean principles. Uh, you'll understand, you'll have seen some examples um, of how we've been adopting uh, lean processes, uh, both in our, inside our business and in the work that we deliver to clients. Uh, and finally, I hope to uh, just identify some uh, implications and opportunities, I think, of the work that we have been doing uh, and suggest some hopefully wider lessons uh, to take forward. Uh, I'm actually going to spend a bit of time giving you the background to our use of lean and why we ended up choosing lean as a paradigm to work with because there are some things, a number of things about the way that we approach software development which as one of the speakers this morning mentioned meant that we were doing lean rather before we knew what the, t what the word was. Um, the core to our software development strategy uh, is an approach that we call uh, correctness by construction which is essentially uh, a set of principles supported by a set of tools um, to try and um, deliver reliable software through a reliable process in a way which generates uh, high quality evidence of assurance um, as well as high quality software. Um, there are a number of key principles and looking around there are a number of attempts to capture this philosophy on a slide. Um, this is one of them. Uh, a number of factors. We think it's very important to keep control of all the objectives of a software development. Uh, that's non-functional properties such as the safety and the security uh, mm -hmm. operational constraints as well as the functional requirements which a lot of software technologies uh, concentrate on. Uh, and we need to keep those in, in control and consideration at every step of the prey. Okay. Um, information management is something that we think is very important uh, to good software engineering. I think we'll, we'll hear more, more about that. and We've seen some implications about that in terms of tooling this morning. Um, we're very keen on strong expression of information, precise expression of information, and in particular on mathematical notations. Um, as a way of helping us capture that. And we believe that when we make changes to information, when we make design decisions, when we progress software development, those steps should be well defined and they should be analyzable and we should be able to have a clear justification for why we're taking the steps that we're taking and why our design artifacts have the form that they have. As part of the aspect of information management, we are very keen to avoid duplicating documentation uh, for the sake of it. We would much rather have one definitive set of information and references to it than multiply up uh, lots of documents. Uh, again, we had a comment this morning about uh, stuff being cut, cut and paste from the PSAC into the SAS. Um, we'd much rather work by reference. Um, and we very strongly believe in demonstrating the correctness of one step in the process before we move on to the next. Verify as we go is, is really the catchphrase. Um, in terms of tools, although um, we do have uh, in-house tools and we have um, techniques and uh, practices that we promote, um, correctness by construction doesn't depend specifically on selecting those tools. We, we believe in picking the best tool for a job for a particular context rather than trying to shoehorn everything into a single toolkit. But really, it's the, the underlying thing is it's a question about thinking about the requirements of a particular project rather than having a standard means of approach and a standard uh, off-the-shelf project template. And I suspect there may be some interesting discussion to be had later about to what extent <laughs> uh, some of those things uh, conflict with some of the discussions we've been having. Uh, we tend to talk about correctness by construction in context of a fairly conventional looking uh, software lifecycle model. Uh, 
Um, we, we have quite a strong emphasis on requirements and understanding the, concept, the context of a system operation uh, up front. Uh, we have parallel development of tests and software. Um, what we do have is a, a strong emphasis on software specification. And I think this perhaps goes some way to being our answer to the, question, the good question that was raised just before lunch um, about the risk that uh, test-driven design only gives you software that's as good as the tests that you wrote. Um, I think that, that places a lot of emphasis on needing a good software spec from which you can derive the right set of tests. Um, and uh, actually picking up on, on, on Jim's comment on that uh, in the question session, what that leads us to do is to, to link, think of trying to use precise and formal or semi-formal techniques for capturing those specifications. And the bullets down here at the bottom are just some of the techniques that we use. Uh, so for requirements, we have our own in-house uh, reveal approach, which is based on the work of uh, Professor Michael Jackson, uh, but has been the subject of significant investment by ourselves over the years. Uh, High-level designs, we would typically just you know, do in, it was a, a typical best-of-breed solution, a UML model. Uh, specifications, we do formal methods. We are not afraid of the mathematics. Um, we are quite happy to use Z or CSP process algebras uh, in, the, uh, in supporting us in getting a good and accurate model of what it is that we want our software to do. So I think if you don't get that element of the design sound, then there's an awful lot of risk uh, to what comes afterwards. It won't be suitable. Detailed design, again, we have an in-house um, method called informed, which is essentially a set of guidelines that can be captured in a number of design notations. And for actual software development, module specification code, we have the Spark language and tool set, uh, which I'm glad to say is uh, subject of a uh, significant recent announcement and uh, business arrangement between ourselves and uh, Adecor and uh, a, a, movement of the, uh, a movement towards open source. Uh, Spark is a programming language. Uh, it's supported by a tool set. It's also supported by a design philosophy and an approach focused on the development of ultra-reliable software. Um, Spark is, is particular, our work has been particularly in the niche of high integrity, high, re high reliability software where there is a need to satisfy regulators or satisfy independent parties of the quality of the results. Um, key element of Spark really is actually this final point here. Um, deep static analysis is something that is the raison d'etre of Spark. It's uh, the ability to take a program and not run it, not compile it, but to carry out meaningful uh, mathematical analysis of what the program means uh, in quite some depth. What does that give us? Well, among other things, that gives us the ability to do certain proofs of correctness. It also gives us the ability to do uh, some lighter weight proofs, like the absence of runtime errors, um, pretty cheaply in terms of effort, in terms of machine power. Um, is this useful? Well, there's a track record of Spark in a variety of applications. Uh, a lot of the uh, software on Eurofighter, flight critical software on Eurofighter is in Spark. There's a number of uh, national and international uh, aircraft projects that Spark has been used on. Um, we've used Spark in the financial industry uh, with MasterCard. Spark is used in the rail industry uh, for signaling <coughs> systems. And uh, please, if, that, if that's of interest, then come and find me later or come and check the website and we'll be very happy to provide more there.